This is an oscilloscope. It is a precision electronic measuring instrument. Measure. How does it measure? These are the questions which, at least in part, we're now going to try to answer. At first glance, an oscilloscope looks like a very complicated piece of equipment. Well, it is. But that does not mean you have to be an electronics engineer in order to understand some of the basic principles of an oscilloscope. Let's take a closer look at the scope. Perhaps the most prominent feature is the screen, very similar to your TV screen. In front of the screen is a device known as a graticule. This graticule is ruled off in the same manner as a graph. We can reason correctly, therefore, that the pattern produced by an oscilloscope must be a graphic pattern. Yes, an oscilloscope displays information in the form of a graph. To understand this a little better, Let's take a look at some simple graphs and see how they are made. Normally, a graph has two components or directions, a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. In the greatest percentage of situations, the horizontal axis represents time. The vertical axis represents the amount of the event that we are measuring. We designate a unit of time for each division on the horizontal axis. As an example, each division could represent a day. The vertical axis could represent temperature. We could now produce a graph showing the average change of temperature from day to day. If we wanted to be a little more precise, we could expand the horizontal axis of the graph and look at the changes of temperature in one day. And this, of course, we could subdivide into smaller units of time, hours. How do we make this graph? Well, in this case, we need someone to take a reading from a thermometer at each interval of time indicated on the graph. We would then simply draw a line connecting all the points. It is also possible to make a graph by mechanical means. Here we want to make a continuous graph showing changes of temperature. We do this mechanically. The mechanical device we use consists of a roll chart which is driven by a motor at a constant speed so that the chart will move an equal distance each hour. The temperature indicating device consists of a pointer with a pen at the tip. As the temperature varies, and as time passes, a continuous graph is traced on the chart. Here is another example of how a graph can be made by mechanical means. This machine is known as a polygraph and it is used for medical purposes. We have talked a little bit about the principles of graphs and how they can be made. So far, we have talked about events that occur in a relatively long period of time. What if we wanted to make a graph of something that occurs in one second? What about a tenth of a second? Or a millionth of a second? Or yes, even a billionth of a second? Undoubtedly, it would be impossible to trace this mechanically on a piece of paper. This is where the oscilloscope comes into the picture. How does an oscilloscope produce a graph? 
Well, the cathode ray tube is perhaps the most important single item in an oscilloscope. It is the window through which the scope displays its information. The cathode ray tube has a screen. A beam of electrons is focused onto the screen. When the electrons strike the screen, it glows and we have a spot of light. By applying the proper voltage to the tube, we can cause this spot of light to move across the screen from side to side. Or up and down. These then are the two main things that occur. The spot of light moves across the screen either horizontally or vertically. In the normal operation of the scope, this is not done manually. It is done electronically by the scope itself. Let's take a look at a simple diagram showing what is inside an oscilloscope. First of all, we have the cathode ray tube. Besides this, there are two other main sections, the vertical amplifier section and the time base generator. Of course, it is much more complicated than this, but this illustration will do for a simple analysis. As we have indicated, the spot of light can be moved across the screen by turning the horizontal positioning control. But this is a rather impractical thing to do when it can be done better automatically. This is what the time base generator does. It produces an electrical signal which it is applied to the cathode ray tube, causes the spot of light to automatically move across the screen from left to right at a very uniform speed. This is called the time base. It is the same as the horizontal axis of any graph. The oscilloscope is so accurately calibrated that we can cause this spot to take almost any desired amount of time to move across the screen. If we take a close look at the graticule in front of the screen, we notice that it is marked off into small divisions. The horizontal distance is 10 divisions. Right now, the scope is set so that the spot of light moves exactly one division every second. Since there are 10 divisions, it will take exactly 10 seconds for the spot to move from here to here. Now let's take a look at the vertical amplifier section. This circuit will move the spot vertically on the screen. All we have to do is feed a small electrical signal into this amplifier and the spot moves. Either up or down. If the electrical signal is positive, it will move the spot up. If the signal is negative, it will move the spot down. We can adjust the controls to make each vertical division represent a small fraction of a volt or many volts. By noticing the number of divisions the spot moves, we can tell exactly what the voltage of the signal is. To make a demonstration, we have attached to the side of this scope a bar of aluminum. Attached to the bar of aluminum is a device which will measure any force or strain placed on the bar and convert it into an electrical signal which can be measured on the oscilloscope. When we apply force to the bar, the scope spot moves up or down.
a large amount of strain can be measured, or with the turn of a knob, the scope can be made sensitive enough to measure a very small amount of strain or pressure. Let's bounce a radar beam off the moon. The first pulse is produced as the radar beam leaves. The second pulse occurs when the beam returns and is received. The return pulse is much smaller than the first. This indicates that the radar beam is weakened from traveling all that distance. By checking the interval of time between the first and second pulses, we can tell exactly how long it took for the signal to travel to the moon and back. We know the speed that a radio wave travels. The scope tells us the time spent in traveling. Therefore, we know the total distance traveled. So far, we have been watching a slow-moving spot. By adjusting this knob, we can move the spot much faster. As we increase the speed of the spot, it moves so fast that soon it looks like one single line rather than a spot. But it is still that one single spot presently moving at such a speed that it only takes one thousandth of a second to move the distance of one division. Now we have the baseline of a graph with each division equal to one thousandth of a second. By adjusting the proper control, we can make each division of the baseline equal to any amount of time we desire. Now the spot moves at the rate of one millionth of a second per division. Now, one ten millionth of a second. Some special scopes will measure the intervals of a fraction of a billionth of a second. Let's measure something now that happens quickly. This is a microphone. It converts sound waves into corresponding electrical signals. By connecting it to this oscilloscope, we can see a graphic picture of the sound waves it picks up. This is a human voice. This is a Tektronik 533 oscilloscope. This is the sound pattern made by a whistle. <laughs> We play a note on an accordion and we see the pattern. As the trace goes above and then below the center line, it represents one vibration or cycle of sound. Since we can easily determine the amount of time that each cycle or vibration occupies, it is simple mathematics to determine how many of these vibrations occur in one second. Now, without changing anything on the scope, let's play a note exactly one octave higher.
Notice that there are now twice as many cycles or vibrations displayed in the same amount of space. This means there are twice as many vibrations per second as before. Now let's watch something a little more complicated than just one note. Maestro? This is a 1,000 cycle tone. Notice that as the volume decreases, so does the vertical size of the graph. This shows us that the scope not only measures time, but also quantity. This is an electronic computer. It is a complicated piece of equipment with many complex electronic circuits. It works lightning fast. Its accurate operation requires precise timing of the signals produced by the many circuits involved. Most of the timing signals in a computer are electrical pulses. Only an oscilloscope is able to observe and measure these pulses. We connect the oscilloscope to the right circuit. The pulse we want to see is fed to the vertical amplifier section of the scope. It will move the spot of light on the screen in a vertical direction. Now that we can see the pulse, let's find out something about it. The scope is now set up so that each division of the baseline represents one millionth of a second. The width of the pulse you will notice is exactly one division. Because each division represents one millionth of a second, then the time duration of the pulse is also one millionth of a second, or one microsecond as it is called. We can learn something else about this pulse. The scope is adjusted so each vertical division represents one-tenth of a volt. Because the pulse occupies two vertical divisions, we know that the pulse amplitude is exactly two-tenths of a volt. We have learned several things about this electrical pulse then. The amplitude, the amount of time it takes to occur, whether it is positive or negative, and its actual shape. Only an oscilloscope can measure the exact size and shape of a fast pulse. We have seen how a microphone is used to convert sound into an electrical signal that we can see on the oscilloscope. We have seen how a strain gauge converts mechanical strain or pressure into a signal which we can also see on the scope. Through the use of special devices such as these, it is possible to convert almost any phenomena into an electrical signal which can be measured on an oscilloscope. Heat, light, sound, gravity, pressure, acceleration, chemical reactions. These are just a few of the things which can be measured with an oscilloscope. In this modern age of atomic energy, missiles, space travel, medicine, communications, scientific research, industry, education, the use of the oscilloscope seems to be almost unlimited. Electronic science demands that we know how much and how long. Even though the how much may be in thousandths of a volt and the how long may be in billionths of a second, the oscilloscope gives us the answer. Although the oscilloscope is a complicated electronic instrument, we can simplify its operation by saying that the oscilloscope draws a graph of some event with relation to time. We have a vertical axis that measures amount and a horizontal axis that measures time. The scope is accurately calibrated so that we can make each horizontal division represent any amount of time we desire from several seconds to a millionth of a second and less. We can also make each vertical division represent an exact amount of voltage so that we can accurately measure the amount of whatever it is that we are viewing. The ingredients, 
a vertical amplifier section, a time-based generator, a cathode ray tube, hundreds of additional parts and components. The product, one of the most versatile electronic measuring instruments in existence, the oscilloscope.